But my God, have you seen Staten Island today? Talk about a battleground. This is gut-wrenching. The struggle for mere survival is playing out in a New York borough of this country's largest city. Three and a half days after the onslaught of Superstorm Sandy, the extent of the devastation in Staten Island the desperation there is only now just coming into focus. Take, for instance, the death toll alone. At least 19 people. That's almost half the total for the entire toll for New York City. There is no light. There is no heat. There is no power. Food now has been running short. Fear has been running high. Just listen to this woman. We're going to die if, it, if we get killed with, with, with the weather. We're going to die. We're going to freeze. We got 90 year old people. We are going to die. You don't understand. You've got to get your truck here on this corner now. This is three days. The man to whom Donna Soli was pouring out her heart was New York's senior senator, Charles Schumer, who was on a tour of Staten Island. And even for those of us who live in the New York area, the death and destruction unleashed by Sandy and the pain and the fear of the recovery process are really difficult to completely comprehend. Just take, for instance, all the people working behind me who are coming to work and seeing this as they pass by. No gas. People lining up everywhere with jerry cans. If they're not sitting in their cars for several hours waiting to just get a drop of gas from a pump that might actually have power because many of the fuel pumps don't have power. So there are gas shortages, and there are food shortages. In a place like New York City, where almost every corner you can get something to eat, or you can buy something in a convenience store, at least there's water on some shelves, but you can barely get a bagel in many places. Sandbagging, all of these things, still part of the issue with the flooding, it's still a problem. Batteries, water, matches, candles, all of these things you may take for granted, Many people in this area surrounding New York can't take a shower. They can't flush their toilets. They can't even open their faucets to get a drink. And then watch this. Just getting water out of the street corner. It's remarkable. Many people being told, boil it. Whatever you do, boil it. Joins me now uh, from Staten Island. And I also want to just add, before I get to you, Brian, uh, there was a report out today that now five people have died because of CO2 poisoning, just trying to heat themselves with generators and maybe not positioning them the right way. The CO2 poisoning has now claimed five lives. I wanted to get to you right away, Brian, because not many people knew how bad the situation was uh, in Staten Island until these pictures started rolling in. Uh, what's it like there now? Well, Ashley, it's uh, still pretty much a scene of devastation. Uh, this neighborhood is getting some relief now. There are National Guard troops on the street. We're all around me. Uh, some are coming down the street right now, and our photojournalist Chris Turner can kind of pan over, show you some of the activity here. People are walking around. They are starting to pick up the pieces. They are starting to get some help. But it is still a huge sense uh, among many people in this neighborhood of just being overwhelmed. Uh, food is still pretty scarce here, although some food uh, has been brought in. Uh, much of that food has been brought in from neighborhood uh, organizations and restaurants. Uh, local community members who live outside the area affected have brought in food and clothing. But we do have to say that uh, since some of the initial complaints, FEMA has arrived on the ground uh, in some presence here. Uh, the Red Cross has set up not too far away from here. Uh, there have been city bulldozers, sanitation trucks, dump trucks. Uh, there's one coming down the street right now. They're all uh, buzzing around here now, clearing debris from the streets. Here comes one. But even with all this activity going on, still just devastation and still it, it looks like a war zone. This is the St. George Mollenkar Orthodox Church. Basement completely flooded out. Uh, one official here told me at least $100,000 worth of damage. They have had to just basically toss out everything that was in the basement that they used uh, to feed people on Sundays. Chairs. They've got a, uh, an oven and stove uh, set over here. They've got a refrigerator here that had to be tossed out. Just all this debris, they've had to clear it out. They don't know uh, if they're going to be able to salvage much of that basement. So that just gives you a feel of the sense of devastation here, Ashley. And, uh, you know, people here just kind of uh, doing what they can to pick up and move on. But it's a very slow process. And the question, slow process, that's exactly the question. As we look at the pictures to the right of you on the screen, it would seem as though that Staten Island would have been in the same predicament that all these other communities uh, you know, were in, and that was dire straits. 
needing help right away, and yet three days later, you know, there was Donna Solis uh, complaining that she felt like she was going to die and that they were freezing overnight. Is it that Staten Island was just isolated because of the bridges, that, that no one could get to them right away, and that images like these played out without people really knowing much about it? Well, Staten Island certainly was isolated in, in some measure, and I think the picture isn't quite clear about how it got so isolated and why it took uh, at least a couple of days for some relief to get to these people after the storm. Actually, I can tell you, uh, I'm not sure about the bridges, but I know that traveling to Staten Island has been very difficult. Roads have been closed. Traffic has been just incredibly snarled in trying to move around. There have been trees down on roads. Uh, you know, long lines for gas have really complicated things. So. We know that logistically getting relief supplies here, getting agencies on the ground has been difficult. But you know what? We got here. Uh, it hasn't been impossible. You can get here. And um, you know, people here just have a sense that they were almost ignored for a couple of days. And can you tell me? Can maybe uh, ascertain some answers here. So what about the marathon? Because there's been a lot of talk about the mayor wanting the New York City Marathon to go as planned this Sunday. But it starts on Staten Island, and, and I've been hearing that there are a lot of people where you're standing who are none too happy that there's a marathon playing out while they're still waiting to get rescued. Yeah, about every five minutes, and let me let this bulldozer pass, about every five minutes we do hear from someone. Sorry about that, it's a fluid situation on this street, obviously. About every five minutes we hear from someone who's pretty upset that the marathon is going to take place. And by the way, it starts only a few miles from here at the Verrazano Narrows Bridge. Uh, and there are people just a few miles away in this neighborhood who are just irate that they are going ahead.